Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel and welcome to bonus weather video number one for this week. And tonight's topic is going to be about wind and convergence and divergence and boundaries. The, the boundaries was a suggestion by uh, one of uh, the subscribers uh, to my service and I thought it was a great idea. And so uh, that's going to be part of the presentation tonight. So let's go on ahead and uh, delve into this. And there is going to be some math involved here. I'll just warn you up front. So let's supposing that we have a wind blowing from the southwest at 15 miles per hour. Now, many of you are familiar with the different, different cardinal wind directions, that 90 degrees is east, 180 is south, 270 is west, and so forth. So midway between 180 and 270 is 225, and so that would be a true southwest wind, okay, coming from the southwest, blowing toward the northeast at about 15 miles per hour. Now, if you split the wind up into two components, and we talked about this on an earlier video, you have the U component, which is the west to east part of the wind. And in this case, that is equal to the strength of the actual wind, which is 15 miles per hour, times the cosine of the angle between the real wind and this west to east component, okay? So the west to east component would be from 270 degrees, okay? The actual wind is from 225, so that angle is 45 degrees. And the cosine of 45 degrees, it turns out, is about 0.707. So you take 15 times 0.707, and you get 10.61 miles per hour. The V component is going to be exactly the same in terms of magnitude because the sine of 45 degrees is also 0.707. And so you end up with 10.61 miles per hour for the V component, which goes from south to north. Okay, And so by splitting the wind up into these two components, it makes it easier to do some other calculations, which we'll get to right now. So supposing we have a stationary front, which means a front that isn't moving, and we denote that by alternating blue triangles and red semicircles. So it's basically a boundary between two different air masses, one relatively cold, one relatively warm, and it's not moving all that much. Sometimes we call it quasi-stationary because, you know, if it moves a foot or an inch, Technically, it's moving, okay, but for all intents and purposes, for where you live at a given spot, it's stationary and it's not going anywhere. So supposing on the warm side of it, we have a southwest wind at 15 miles per hour, and we've already calculated that the U and the V wind components are going to be 10.61 miles per hour apiece. Supposing on the other side of the front, the wind is coming in from the northeast at 15. Now, those U and V wind components are going to be the same magnitude, but they're going to be negative, okay? Because now, the east-west component is not going from west to east, it's going from east to west, and the south-north component is not going south to north, it's going north to south. So both of those values are then negative. Now, we define divergence as the change in the U value over a certain distance of x, plus the change in the V component over a certain distance of Y. Well, the U is going from plus 10.61 to minus 10.61, so it's negative. V is going from plus 10.61 to minus 10.61, so it's negative. And so you have a negative number, and you add another negative number, and you get an even bigger negative number, and that means the divergence is negative. And the negative value of divergence is convergence, okay? That means the air is coming together, and when air comes together, it can't go down because you got the ground there, and so it goes up. And if you got enough moisture, you get clouds and precipitation, and that's why fronts are usually regions of active weather because there is convergence going on in those areas. Now, it's easy to look at a weather map, and you see the winds coming at each other in opposite directions, and you say, oh, yeah, yeah, it's convergence, no question about it, okay? But what about this situation? situation here. Supposing on the one side of the front we have a southwest wind at 15, so that hasn't changed, but on the other side of the front we've got a southwest wind at 5, so the exact same direction but only a third of the magnitude of the wind on the other side of the front. When you do those calculations, the U component on the wind up here is 3.54 from west to east, and the V component is 3.54 from south to north. So let's take a look at our divergence equation again. What's happening to U as we go in the X direction? U is going from 10.61 to 3.54, so it's going down. It's a negative change. 
V is going from 10.61 to 3.54. It's also going down. It's a negative change. And so, again, you've got convergence going on, even though the wind directions are identical. Why? Because you have 15 mile an hour worth of wind piling into 5 miles an hour worth of wind, and so the air is piling up. Okay, and you're still getting convergence, even though the directions are exactly the same. So this is a situation where you have to look at it a little bit more carefully, because if you just look at it from the direction standpoint, you say, ah, everybody's coming from the southwest. No big deal. But the speeds are different. And so that makes a big difference in terms of whether or not you have divergence or convergence going on. And so those are things that definitely have to be looked at. OK, last thing. Supposing we have a thunderstorm, I'm going to denote that by this red circle here, and uh, as the air goes up in a thunderstorm, you know, it, it, uh, you get condensation going on, you get raindrops forming, and then those raindrops start to fall into unsaturated air. And as it does that, it, the raindrops begin to evaporate, and evaporation is a cooling process. If you don't believe that, think about the last time you stepped out of a shower or you stepped out of a swimming pool. You feel cold, right, because that water that's on your skin is evaporating, and that process is extracting heat from your body or from the air around you, and so you feel chilly, okay? So the rain falls into this relatively dry air. It evaporates. That cools the air that cold air now begins to accelerate toward the ground. And when it hits the ground, it can't keep going, okay? So it has to spread out. And so this thunderstorm is embedded in a southwesterly flow, but when this downdraft or downburst comes down out of the thunderstorm, all of a sudden now you have a localized region of chilly air or colder air that is spreading out in all directions. And at least in one area, it's pretty obvious to see what's going to happen there is in this area right in here, you've got a northeast wind coming out of the thunderstorm because of this downdraft, but it's embedded in a southwesterly flow. And so you have convergence along this little boundary right in here. And again, when the air go comes together, it can't go down, it goes up. And so a lot of times these outflow boundaries, if you will, will generate new thunderstorms, okay? And the first one will die off and then the new one will form and it'll look like the thunderstorm is simply moving along, but it's actually uh, an event or a series of events where one storm forms, does its thing, dies away. It then generates another boundary, which generates another thunderstorm. And this is what we refer to as propagation as opposed to movement, okay, is that these processes are interacting with the overall flow that the storms are embedded in, and then it looks like the whole thing is moving along like this, when in reality it's a storm, storm dies, new storm forms, new storm dies, next storm forms, next storm dies, and so forth, and it just keeps moving right on along. And so it's those interactions with these boundaries, these little mini cold fronts, that can wreak havoc with forecasting exactly where these thunderstorms are going to go and how it's going to affect any one given area. All right, that was a lot for today, uh, but I hope that made a little bit of sense, and I hope for the person that wanted me to talk about boundaries, I hope that was sufficient. If it wasn't, let me know, and we can always do another one and elaborate on it a little bit. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that and found it educational. We'll be back tomorrow with another daily weather update, and the next bonus weather video will be coming up on Friday afternoon or evening, depending on how long it takes me to put it together. <laughs> so you all have a great night, and we'll talk to you soon.